Dear students, today I would like to continue my lectures about the connective tissue. Today I would like to show you the fibers and the ground substance of the connective tissue. Here you can see that picture what I showed you in the last lecture about the connective tissue where we can see the main compartments of the connective tissue. This is really important question also in the exam. The examiner will ask you that please tell me what are the main compartments of the connective tissue and what's the answer? The cells. We saw the cells of the connective tissue in the last lecture and between the cells we have the intercellular substance. Uh, earlier, we saw the fixed cells and the mobile cells of the connective tissue and also I told you the main important characteristics of the melanocytes. And today we will see the intercellular mat matrix, the amorphous ground substance, consists of fibers. I will show you the collagen fibers, the reticular fibers and the elastic fibers. And also I will show you the molecular uh, characteristics of the ground substance consists of organic materials, glycos, aminoglycans, proteoglycans, aminoglycans, consists of a lot of water and of course in case of bone and teeth we have a lot of uh, inorganic material, crystals. Let's see now the fibers first, the collagen fibers, the elastic fibers and the reticular fibers. The first is the collagen fibers, the collagen, collagenous fibers, the most abundant fibers uh, of the connective tissue and it forms the 30% of the whole protein contact of the body. So it is really important part of uh, the whole uh, tissue and uh, it is flexible and have a very high tensile strength and here you can see a picture from a wire steel wire now we are not able to go to skiing but I hope that you saw earlier the collagen fibers they are so similar to these structures what we can see uh, during a skiing and uh, it is really important that we have to mention the special staining of the fibers. Here you can see uh, the collagen fibers with hematoxylin alzin staining. In this picture you see that they have a little wavy appearance but they could be also straight depending on the tissue what we see. Here you can see another special staining of the uh, fibers, the azocarmine aniline blue, the azen staining. With azen staining, the aniline blue stains the connective tissue fibers. They will be blue and the cells, the cytoplasm of the cells, they are red. And here you can see a special staining of the connective tissue which is the connective, I mean the collagen fibers. This is the von Kieson. Here you see the fibers with a very, very intensive color. Uh, we can talk about uh, 27 different types of collagen fibers. And uh, of course, it's not necessary to know all of them, but of course we have to know some and that is what I would like to tell you. The type number one within the group of the fibril forming uh, collagen fibers, the type one will form the 90% of all of the collagen fibers. We can find it the skin, in the tendons, ligament, capsule, bone, you can see the structures in this picture. So 90% of the collagen fibers, they are the type 1 collagen fibers. Type 2 collagen fibers we can find in the cartilage, in the hyaline cartilage, the vitreous body of the eye, and the, the type 3 collagen fibers, they will form a meshwork, and that's why we call them reticular fibers. We can find them in the wall of the vessels, in the kidney, I will tell you, uh, the parenchymal organs. I will tell you in the details what are the characteristics of the reticular fibers. 
the second group of the collagen fibers is the fibril associated collagenous uh, fibers. We can here you see the type 9, the 12, what we can find in the cartilage, in the tendon and the ligaments. And finally, we have another special network forming uh, collagen fibers. For example, the type 4, what we can find in the lamina basalis of the uh, epithelium, you know, this is which will fix the epithelial tissue to the underlying connective tissue. And within this connection, the type 7 has also really important uh, function uh, between the connection of the dermis and the epidermis. Here you can see the pictures about the number 7 and the number 4 collagen fibers. In this picture, we can see the electromicroscopic structure of the collagen fibers. Here you can see them in longitudinal, longitudinal section, and this is the cross-section of one fiber. You can see the smaller units, which are called the collagen fibrils, and depending on the number of these fibrils, the thickness of the collagen fibers, they will change, could be 2 to 20 micrometer in diameter. If we see with higher magnification, you see striation within the collagen fibers because of the special orientation of these smaller units. What I told you, these are the fibrils. The fibrils, they are 15 to 300 nanometer, the length, and the diameter could be uh, 25 nanometer and because of the special orientation we can see this striation within the electromicroscopic picture of the collagen fibers. I will tell you that, uh, I will show you that later in details. Let's talk about the synthesis of the fibers. We know very well that the fibroblasts, one of the fixed cells of the uh, con uh, connective tissue, they will produce the collagen fibers and also the ground substance of uh, the connective tissue. Here you can see the fibroblasts. The fibroblasts, they have big cytoplasm with a lot of processes. And uh, then we have a nucleus, which is uh, very huge with the prominent nucleolus inside. And you can see the cytoplasm consists of rough and the plasmic reticulum where we have the protein synthesis and we have we can see also Golgi apparatus and also mitochondria within the cytoplasm of the cells. These cells they will produce the collagen fibers within the rough and the plasmic reticulum and after these smaller molecules they will go through the cytoplasm and after out of the cell will form, will fuse and will form the collagen fibers. Let's see the steps of the synthesis of the collagen fibers. First here you can see the rough and the plasmatic reticulum, the ribosomes, and uh, here you see the synthesis of the alpha chains of uh, the uh, molecules. These chains, they will form triplets, and uh, after we can talk about procollagen molecules. These procollagen molecules will go through the cell membrane, and after, out of the cell, we will cut or the two distal parts will be uh, separated by special uh, enzymes and will form the tropocollagen molecules. The tropocollagen molecules will form connections, links between each other. And here you can see the special orientation of these uh, fibers. That is how they form the fibril. And finally, the fibrils will form the collagen fibers. So these are the steps of the collagen synthesis. Let's see this in the next video. In this picture you can see the collagen fibers. These are green and between the fibers we can see the fibroblasts. 
The fibroblasts, they are huge cells fixed to the fibers. They have a lot of uh, processes and big cytoplasm. And if we see the higher magnification of the cell membrane, it's during the movement of the tissue, you can see how they change the position. On the membrane, we can see these holes where the molecules, the procollagen molecules will be secreted and after will be tropocollagen molecules. And these tropocollagen molecules will form connections between each other and they will form the collagen fibers. And if we have another mechanical uh, effect, these are able to do uh, remodeling and um, here you can see the degradation of the collagen fibers and we have a resynthesis uh, by the other fibroblast. The fibroblast will produce new fibers and here in this picture you can see the remodeling of the collagen fibers. So this uh, video shows you very well and it is very visible how the fibroblasts they will form uh, the collagenous fibers. In this picture you can see very well this electromicroscopic uh, structure what I told you earlier that these small uh, fibrils, collagen fibrils, uh, they will form a very special orientation and because of the regular uh, position of these uh, fibers we can see the striation we have 68-69 nanometer between the fibers and that's why we can see this uh, striation in the electromicroscopic picture. We have a lot of glycine proline, hydroxyproline um, groups uh, in these fibers which can help in the connection uh, between the connection of the uh, different fibers. It is really important uh, to talk about that special characteristic of the collagen fiber that we can dissolve it with a long cooking. That's why I would like to show you this picture. We are so close to the Valentine's Day. Uh, here you can see the gelatin. Yeah, it's very special jelly. Uh, which is um, uh, exactly the dissolved collagen fiber. And here in Hungary, of course, we have to mention, we have to tell you a very special Hungarian food, which is the Hungarian jelly. Our mothers and grandmothers, they cook this um, special meat during the winter time. They cook uh, the different parts uh, of the a pig, for example, a different skinny parts, the ear and tail, and of course, a lot of meat. They cook it for a long time, dissolve the collagen fibers, and after they put it uh, first, long time ago, to the snow, now to the fridge. And finally, here you can see this uh, food will be, which is the Hungarian jelly. This is dissolved collagen fiber. And uh, here we can see the meat and all of the different parts. It is really tasty. I recommend you to, to taste it. I hope you will remember that these are collagen fibers, which are dissolved if you see this food in the market. The second group of the, co uh, of the co connective tissue fibers, these are the elastic fibers. The elastic fibers, they are thinner than the collagenous fibers and they can form uh, a random uh, fashion. They can branching and they can form a network. And it is really important that they can stretch and they can snap back to the original uh, position. And this is a very important characteristic of this fiber. Here you can see the hematoxylin ausin staining and they are the second uh, special staining of the elastic fiber, which is the resorcin fuxin. With this staining, the elastic fibers, they have a bluish or purple color. And finally, here you can see the ortsein staining. It is really important to know because we have a lot of slides in the histopractice 
where we show the elastic fibers with ortsane staining. With ortsane staining, the elastic fibers, they have a brownish uh, color. Let's see now some uh, pictures from the histo practice where we will show you the elastic fibers with ortsane staining. This is the first picture from the middle-sized vessels. Here you can see a vein and this is an artery. You will learn the structures, the layers of these vessels. We can distinguish three different parts, tunica intima, tunica media and tunica adventitia. These are the three layers of the different vessels. In the media, the smooth muscle is the dominant. In the adventitia, we can see a lot of uh, connect, uh, collagen uh, and elastic fibers too. Here you can see it is a connective tissue sheet. Elastic fibers are visible in this layer. And which is uh, really visible that between the tunica intima and media and between the media and adventitia too, we have a thick elastic membrane. This is called the internal and external elastic membrane formed by elastic fibers. So that's why we can see this uh, uh, brownish uh, line there. But you will learn this when we will see uh, the structures of the vessels in the histopractice. The other vessel uh, is the elastic artery, the, for example, the aorta and some bigger uh, branches of the aorta, where uh, in the tunica media between the uh, smooth muscle cells, we have a lot of membranes, elastic membranes formed by the elastic fibers. That is what we can see with ortsane staining too. In the tunica adventitia, you have a smaller vessels. We can see very well the uh, elastic membrane of the middle-sized uh, vessel. We will see also this slide in the histopractice. It is really special that there in the wall of the aorta, the smooth muscle cells, they are also involved in the formation of the elastic fibers. The third uh, example in this picture is the elastic cartilage. We can find elastic cartilage in the ear, in the uh, epiglottis, and you can see there the cells of the cartilage, the chondrocytes, and between the chondrocytes, this orsine stained uh, elastic fibers, they will form a meshwork. We will see also this slide uh, in the histopractice. Uh, after, in this picture, I would like to demonstrate for you uh, my belly exactly, my skin, because in the skin we have a lot of elastic fibers too. This was one day before the birth of my uh, my daughter. Here you can see that how flexibility we have here in the skin too because of the huge amount of elastic fibers. Also we have a lot of elastic fibers of course in the lung around the bronchi too and uh, uh, around the alveoli. And we have a lot of elastic fibers um, within some ligaments, for example, between the vertebrae. This is called the ligamentum flavum. Flavum means yellow, yellowish, because of the huge amount of elastic fibers. In this picture, you can see the electromicroscopic picture of the elastic fibers. In the uh, electron microscopic picture, you can see the innermost uh, part of the uh, elastic fiber. It is different compared to the collagen fiber. We have a homogeneous innermost part, which is called the elastin. The elastin consists of smaller tropoelastin monomers. Here you can see the original position. All of the monomers, they have a wavy shape. Um, manner and between them of course we have connections and if we stretch it after they will be straight and they are able to go back to the original position and this is the molecular mechanism of the whole stretching uh, of the uh, elastic fibers and around also we have a fibrillar shaped uh, compartments which is called the fibrillin. In this electron microscopic picture you can see a little part from the collagen molecule too and we can compare uh, the electron microscopic picture of the two fibers. 
And it is really important to mention that not only just the fibroblasts, the smooth muscle cells, they are also uh, able to produce uh, elastic fibers, for example, in case of huge, large elastic vessels. After, I would like to turn to the reticular fibers. The reticular fibers, the third type of uh, connective tissue fibers, but we know very well that it consists of type 3 collagen fibers. And we have a very huge uh, uh, amount of carbohydrate groups which will attach to these fibers and that's why because of the sugar groups the special staining of the reticular fiber will be the pass. The other special staining of the reticular fiber is the silver nitrate. You see they form, uh, it is very visible how the reticular fibers they form this meshwork. This picture is from the liver and you can see how these fibers they form like a, a network uh, between the cells of the parenchymal organs. Where do we find uh, reticular fibers uh, within the body? Uh, this is really important to uh, tell that that question that where do we find reticular fibers in the body is not the same that where do we have reticular connective tissue in uh, the body. Because reticular fibers alone with this meshwork we can find a lot of parenchymal organs like in the liver, around the vessels, the nerves, in the adipose tissue. And here you can see how the reticular fibers they form the meshwork with special staining we can show it. But in case of uh, reticular connective tissue, we can find also reticular fibers which will form a meshwork. But in the cross points of the reticular fibers, we can find the reticulum cells. And these reticulum cells uh, I mentioned in the earlier lecture, like one of the fixed cells of the connective tissue, they will produce the fibers and they will produce the ground substance of the connective tissue. And between the fibers and the cells, here you can see smaller dots. These are the lymphocytes. Uh, this is a special uh, tissue of the lymphatic organs, except the thymus. We have in the spleen, in the tonsil, in the lymph node, and is a characteristic background tissue of the bone marrow. So now I would like to go back to this original picture uh, to show you again the main compartments of the connective tissue. We saw the cells, we saw uh, the intercellular one part of the intercellular substance. Within the cell we have the fixed and the mobile cells. I hope that it is boring for you because it is a really important question in the exam. And Within the intercellular substance, we saw the fibers, the collagen fibers, the reticular fibers, the elastic fibers. And finally, now I would like to show you the ground substance of the connective tissue, this jelly-like material which is located between the cells and the fibers, which will form a very, very intensive, important background of the tissue where we have very active, uh, transport, material transport, and it has a really important function not only just to fill the empty space between the cells and the fibers. Uh, let's see now uh, the compartments, the organic compartments of the amorphous ground substance. In the amorphous ground substance, we can find glycosaminoglycan chains which are consists of, uh, they cons uh, it consists of um, disaccharide units. So here we have a long chain, which consists of smaller disaccharides. So here you can see, for example, heparin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, uh, carotene sulfate. We have long chain, uh, for example, a hyaluronic acid which consists of these disaccharide uh, units. 
And uh, if we see these disaturated units, uh, you see that most of them, they will contain sulfate groups. And the sulfate groups, they have a negative uh, charge. And that's why they can bind a lot of water. And because of the negative uh, charge characteristic, that's why they will be uh, basophilic with hematoxylin alzin staining. And of course, because of the uh, because of the sugar disarad units, it will be the in the cellular substance it will be uh, pass positive. Let's see now uh, the structure, the proteoglycans. What are those? So I told you that we have a glycose aminoglycan chain consists of smaller disaccharide units. So here you can see a GAG uh, molecule. These are not alone. These are attached to a core protein. Here you can see the core protein in the center. A lot of glycose aminoglycan molecules will uh, attach to the core protein. And all together they will form the proteoglycans. And if you would like to imagine this structure, it is so similar to that brush what we use in the kitchen to clear, clear the bottles. So this is a molecular shape of one proteoglycan molecules. But these uh, proteoglycans also, they are not alone, they are also fixed to a long uh, chain, which is the hyaluronic acid. Here you can see a hyaluronic acid. The proteoglycans, they are attached to that with a link protein. Here, a lot of proteoglycans together, attaching to the structure with the link proteins. And here we can see a final uh, composition of that, uh, of the amorphous ground substance, which is located between the cells and fibers. It has a special name, it's the agrican in the case of the cartilage, but generally the structure, we can uh, show this picture if we are talking about the structure of the ground substance. For that picture, uh, I would like to show you a model which is here next to me. Uh, let me a little uh, one minute to, to show you this uh, model. This is the model what we uh, prepared to demonstrate for the students to stru the structure of uh, the amorphous ground substance. These units, what you can see here, these are the proteoglycans, the proteoglycan molecules, and these proteoglycan molecules will attach to a hyaluronic acid. And here you can see how they form this three-dimensional structure. And into this structure will be attached the uh, fibers, the cells, with special adhesive molecules, which are the glycoproteins. Let's say that. I continue the lecture. Here you can see uh, the epithelial tissue, the cells. There, the cells, they will be fixed to the lamina basalis. In the lamina basalis, we can, we can find type 4 collagen molecules, what I told you earlier. So into this, uh, we have special other type 7 collagen fibers, which will fix the cells to the underlying connective tissue. And under, we can see the connective tissue where we have the amorphous ground substance consists of proteoglycans, but only, not only just one molecule we have, of course, within this part. This proteoglycan molecules, they will form like a background amorphous substance which will be between the fibers, between the collagen fibers, between the elastic fibers, between the reticular fibers. And of course, here we have to imagine the different cells, what I told you, the fixed 
cells and the mobile cells of the connective tissue and all of them they are linked to each other with the glycoprotein molecules for example fibronectin, laminin, tenastin. These are located here uh, between these molecules and they can help the connection between these structures to form a very very intensive connection between the compartments of the connective tissue. And also I told you earlier that because of the negative charge these proteoglycan molecules they can bind a lot of water and uh, this is very important also very important part of the amorphous ground substance the water there. Finally, at the end of the lecture, I would like to tell you some words about the disorders of the abnormal synthesis of the different fibers. If we talk about the uh, collagen fibers, the, in case of uh, the lack of vitamin C, we have problems with the, with the synthesis of the collagen fibers. We know very well that the disorder, which is uh, based on this abnormality, is called a scurvy. What uh, we had uh, dur uh, during the sailors, you know, in the sea, uh, they uh, spent a lot of time uh, in the sea, more months, and that's why they had no fresh food and they had problem with the collagen synthesis. So they had bleeding, abnormal healing, and because of the infections and uh, of course the different side effects of this disorder, they died. Very huge part of the whole uh, karma dog died uh, within this disorder. But after they uh, realized if uh, they eat fresh fruit from tropical islands, for example, or they bring uh, vegetables with them in the, in the boat, after they can protect uh, themselves against this disorder. And only just later, of course, in 1937, nine, uh, Professor St. Dirty Albert uh, was that who discovered the vitamin C, which is a really important uh, molecule in uh, the synthesis of the collagen fibers. We are really, um, uh, this is a, he is a really famous Hungarian um, scientist. He worked in Szeged University and we are so proud because this is the Nobel Prize which was made here in, in Hungary. And finally, uh, I would like to show you another abnormality, the abnormality of the elastic fiber synthesis. Uh, this is uh, the Marfan syndrome. The Marfan syndrome, in a case of the Marfan syndrome, because the abnormal synthesis of the elastic fibers, the patients, they are really tall because we have no fibers which keep the joints together. Maybe you know uh, Giraffe, uh, he's a very special uh, people here in Page. All of our citizens, they know him very well. Um, he uh, has Marfan syndrome. And um, unfortunately, in case of these disorders, the elastic fibers, they are also affected uh, in the vessels too. They could have problems with the circulation, maybe with uh, like an aneurysm in the heart. He had this problem too. So that's why it could be a very dangerous disorder. And I hope that you will remember this type of abnormality in case of the elastic fiber synthesis. And now uh, I would like to finish this part of my lecture. And in the next lecture, I would like to continue with the different types of the connective tissue. Thank you so much for your attention.